And part of the problem with this situation, unfortunately, is complicated in law, but it comes down to biodiversity offsets and the fact that there were some changes in the New South Wales legislation going back to about 2016. And so the technical um, uh, pathway that's led to this problem this year with the zombie DA being reinvigorated is what's called a Certificate 34A. And I'd like to just read it to you so everybody's on the same page about exactly what has happened. So this year on the 30th of March, uh, the Department of Planning in New South Wales approved in accordance with Clause 28, the former planning provisions that a third, Section 34A certificate was issued to certify that this proposal on this site is developed as part of concept plan approval for which the biodiversity impacts of the proposal have been satisfactorily assessed before the 25th of August 2017. And then secondly, that the conservation measures to offset the residual impacts of the proposed development uh, of the biodiversity impacts after the measures required to be taken to avoid or minimise those impacts have been secured into the future. Now, we would argue that neither of those things have happened and this Certificate 34A has been issued in error. The problem is to actually argue that before a court is, a, is another very difficult process. So that is what we are working towards challenging. Um, but right now we need everybody's help to understand the complexity of this issue and try to help us lobby for more intervention at the ministerial level. Yes, so that's right, sir. The fact that it has been approved in 2013 is a concept plan, meaning only the Threatened Species Conservation Act of 1994 applies and not the Biodiversity Conserva Conservation Act of 2017, which currently applies to land that is getting developed. Uh, and the other major issue is it's already been mapped um, by the various government departments that it's flood prone, uh, that it's fire prone, that it has acid sulfate soils, that it has a high groundwater table and the types of vegetation on there which is coastal swamp heath, wallum heath and other numerous ecologically endangered scribbly gum, swamp mahogany, paper bark, all these types of um, threatened species that is it critical food and shelter for these threatened species and they're threatened for a reason, they're heading to extinction and we are in a biodiversity crisis situation. This is equal to the climate change scenario that's happening and unfolding. The fact that we've had catastrophic floods and fires in the last few years are not even taken into consideration when this development was recently approved again in May this year. All that data isn't even factored into the approval process. And the fires recently in Tiagra and all through the Byron Shire in October this year, when over 750 hectares was burnt, Wallum, the 30 hectares here that wasn't burnt, became a refuge for those threatened species because they've lost their food and shelter. There is no nectar, there is no trees, there is no food for them in that 750 hectares that was just burnt in October this year, let alone the fires that happened in 2019 and 20 or the floods that happened in 2021. None of that real-time data has been included in the approval process for this site. And I think Luciana touched on a really important point there. Um, myself and, and our filming assistant today are both flood victims in the Byron Shire and it's quite hard to talk about that without being emotional but for someone who's lost their home to a flood, I cannot understand how we are possibly thinking about putting another 100 homes metres from the beach in a flood zone at sea level where the water table is this far below the surface level in an acid environment full of endangered species, particularly frogs. That is complete insanity to me. There is a number of us in the group that are still in emergency accommodation because we are homeless because of the floods and how any bureaucrat or person in any position of responsibility could possibly approve this development again this year, a year after the devastating floods took out thousands of homes in our community is beyond insane to me. Like, there is no logic in that. So aside from all of the environmental values and obviously the impact of climate change and encroaching sea levels, rising sea levels and impacting in coastal zones, they're all valid issues. But, you know, we came here to talk more to this, the species side of the values that haven't been assessed. But as a big picture, what's going on here is just not acceptable. This development can't proceed. Absolutely. And so what today, why we want to share this information is because we have spent several months, day 24-7, working non-stop, uh, researching from a scientific 
perspective, from a legal perspective, from every perspective of how can they justify in this modern day with our climate crises, our biodiversity crisis, how can they justify clearing pristine bushland that is, has so many threatened species on site and so many ecologically endangered, endangered plant communities. Yes, we're in a housing crisis, but we have plenty of cleared land in other areas of the Byron Shire that would be far more suitable for housing. So there, you can't justify, you know, on any level, this kind of development.